Welcome everyone. Let's talk about uh, media and communication. And today we explore uh, how Google's funding competition, the innovation challenge, is shaping the way uh, journalism businesses develop new ways to make money, so new business models. And I have invited uh, Alfred Ermida to analyze projects between funded between 2018 and 2022. And as we will see, Google might be prioritizing financial sustainability over well, some other aspects of journalistic innovation. And Alfred will reveal that soon. Alfred, welcome to our episode. Thank you, Rodrigo. It's a pleasure to be here. So your study looks at a wider range of projects over a longer period. And well, it helps us understand how Google's uh, funding shapes journalism innovation and how this might impact, of course, public good mission of journalism. So that's why you decided to start the study? Well, this is part of a larger project with my colleague and co-author, Marilyn Young at the University of British Columbia, where we're looking at um, emerging business models, innovation practices, trying to answer the question in terms of what does the future of journalism look like? Who are the actors here? And what are the sustainable ideas being put forward to fund and support this journalism? We were interested in Google because platforms like Google and Meta have had an outsized influence to a certain extent in terms of its funding of journalism. And this is happening at a global level, but also at a national level. And you can see a scenario where Google potentially has significant impact at a national level in funding innovation. So for this project, we wanted to look at the Google News Innovation Challenge. It ran over four years from 2018 to 2022. It ran in 78 countries globally and they funded a total of 354 projects. So we want to say, how does Google think of and conceive of innovation? How does it think of and conceive of sustainable business models? Because the aim of this project was largely around developing business models. It also wanted to encourage novel ways of thinking and encourage diversity, but a key focus was all about how do you develop a sustainable future for journalism? Mm -hmm. And what are the most important findings or conclusions that you would pinpoint from your study? Well, I think there's two things here. One is that we see a significant amount of that funding going to the United States and then also to Europe. So big chunk to more mature media markets and with an impact and a, um, a focus on the US, as you might expect from a company like Google. But they were spread across the world, across all the regions in the world. The one thing that struck us looking at the results and analyzing what kind of projects were funded was the sort of things they were supporting. And most of the funding, about three quarters of it, was revolved around uh, business models to do with reader revenue, uh, business models to do with distribution, and business models due with audience engagement. Now, what's striking about this is that all of these involved readers, all involve the audience. So even when we had projects that was about developing new methods of distribution, the aim was to reach new readers, new listeners who would be able to pay for the service. When it came to audience engagement, again, that was tied into having people become more uh, involved with an organization so they become members and subscribers. So one key thing that struck us from this research and from the findings was that the orthodoxy of reader revenue was a global phenomenon. Over four years, we see both organizations applying to Google to fund reader revenue ideas and Google funding these ideas. So when it comes to thinking about business models, we really do see that at least with this Google funding over these four years, innovation was all centered around how do we extract value and revenue from our readers, as opposed to looking at other business models. Mm -hmm. Let's follow up on that. So tell us more about potential uh, implications, practical implications of this study and its findings. Well, one of them is that there were very few studies, it was only about 2%, that looked at business models around advertising or things that would compete with Google. Mm -hmm. So part of it, you can see, well, nobody applied to Google to develop a business model that would compete with Google's dominance of digital advertising. So we see that was ruled out. But I think the key thing for both scholars and for industry is that at a time when we're seeing the decline of commercial media, where we're seeing the dominance of advertising by the platforms such as Google, Meta, and Amazon, mm -hmm. 
that the solution to these financial challenges seems to be readers, seems to be the audience. And we're seeing this both encouraged by what Google has funded and also reinforced. Because one of the things we discuss in the paper is, well, if other organizations look to see what does Google fund, uh, what has been successful, they will see reader revenue projects being funded, distribution projects being funded. And we suggest that this is going to then encourage other news organizations, journalism startups, to follow the same kind of model. Because in a sense, they're being validated by Google. Google has given its stamp of approval to these types of projects that focus on one business model, which certainly is readers, through membership, donations, subscriptions, paywalls. Mm -hmm. But it does rather narrow the options left to journalism, because essentially it's saying readers are the answer. And if we look back in Canada in the 70s and 80s, uh, circulation, the money that people would pay for a physical newspaper, accounted only for about 17% of revenue. Mm -hmm. So in the course of you know, 30 years, we're moving from a model where a news organization would mostly get its, its revenue from advertising and other sources, a minuscule amount from the audience, to instead saying, well, no, we need now to have a significant percentage of our revenue from audiences. Mm -hmm. And I just believe that that puts all your eggs in one basket because it, it's not encouraging innovation in business models. Essentially, it's saying, how do we think of innovation within this very tight window of readers and extracting value from our readers? And so what should future research focus on? The sort of the impact of other platforms, or is there something else worthy of conducting research on now? Well, this was a snapshot mm -hmm. of innovation and business models, because it really is looking at a specific fund that Google ran around innovation. Our focus for it, and the reason I think it's important, is because it deliberately was around innovation. Google has uh, been entangled with the news industry through providing different supports, boot camps, et cetera. This one was very specifically to say, how do we support innovative practices that develop business models, encourage diversity, et cetera. Mm -hmm. And so I think the scope here to say, what kind of impact does this have beyond that? One of the questions that emerges from research is that, of course, we don't know the projects that weren't funded. We don't know who applied to Google and didn't get money. We only know what Google funded. And so we don't know whether did Google fund reader revenue projects because that's what Google was focused on? Or is that what people were applying to Google to fund? I suspect it's a mixture of both. So there's a sort of validation process where projects get funded, other news organizations see this has been funded. They see the success of big media giants like the New York Times and the Guardian with reader revenue. And so you see a sort of, sort of self-reinforcing cycle where other news organizations have to make this work. Google seems to be funding it. It's what we should be doing. Mm -hmm. And for me, the gap is what isn't being funded? What other models are available to sustain and encourage independent journalism, particularly when it comes to small startups? Mm -hmm. I actually found interesting well, in your article and here in the conversation when you mentioned this, well, this be too big probably focus on audience engagement. And also when you mentioned the uh, potential for Google to act like a private government, there was a good intake in the article. So what reflections about the study do you want to share with the listeners and viewers, some personal reflections of what you found? One of the interesting things is that Google, um, with, with these funding calls, Google didn't say, would set some parameters, but they were very loose parameters. One of the things they wanted to encourage was greater projects around diversity and inclusion and equity. And there were a handful of those, but they, they were a very small number. So that leads to a question for further research. Is this, are issues of diversity, equity, and inclusion not a priority for the journalism industry? Or is it not something that would apply to Google? Or is the question that at a time when you're facing financial decline, the priority is bringing money in? keeping the lights on, keeping the business going. So does then do then issues of diversity, equity, and inclusion take second place to the need to just bring in revenue? Mm -hmm. The other question that comes from this is, 
when we were coding the projects, we also were saying, were any of these projects around uh, leadership and the management of, of an organization? And were they about organizational and structural change? And the answer was none. There were no projects that addressed leadership and trying to innovate in how an organization is run and managed. And there were no projects that looked at making structural changes in the nature of journalism organizations. And others have done research on this, that if you want to innovate, if you want to address, say, younger audiences, if you want to address Generation Z, you need to think in terms of changing the leadership, changing the management, changing who is in these positions of power, and potentially also changing the structures, which ties in then to issues of diversity, equity, and inclusion. It's not just enough to hire a person, a black, indigenous, a person of color, but you need to put them in a position of power or change the way you think of your journalism to work with these communities. Mm -hmm. But with this study, we saw nothing around leadership, the way an organization is run, or structural changes in how it, it is put together. Mm -hmm. And when we think about innovation, innovation is more than just about coming up with a new way to make money from your readers. It's really fundamentally thinking, what is the purpose of our journalism? Who does it serve? Who do we need in this organization? And how do we run that and organize that in a way that promotes a more open and equitable journalism? Uh, let's wrap up this episode, uh, Alfred, in one or two sentences that would sum up the whole thing we discussed. What would it be? I think the key message here is that what this study shows is an, a preponderance of reader revenue as the solution to the financial woes of, of the news industry. Mm -hmm. And that is interesting to see because we see this trend happening in other parts of the world and with other news organizations. But it also ignores the fact that Putting your eggs in one basket is not necessarily the, the right answer when you're looking for sources of revenue. In fact, other studies have shown that actually diversifying your revenue is a better strategy. And so the question I have out of this, and I think what comes out of the study is, if we are so, so focused on reader revenue, what are we missing? And what are the other opportunities to develop sustainable models to promote and support journalism? Great episode. Alfred, thank you very much. It's my pleasure. So for those who are watching us on YouTube, you can find all the resources, the study that Alfred just shared, uh, the findings, all the materials uh, in the description, as well as some links for you to follow up and to um, keep up with, stay tuned to new episodes.